you are committing a crime by going to Cuba and we are going to find you. David, we need your help. Hemingway's car, Chrysler, New Yorker Deluxe Convertible has just come into our hands after being missing for all these years. This is a legendary car because there are all these myths around what happened to it after Hemingway left. That's it? The original motor? Yes. Hemingway's Deluxe Convertible restored depending on the condition. Priceless. Obviously, we're not going to be able to use that one. David, can you help us get the parts to restore the car? It's partly that spirit that drives me on this project. It's like something that has to be done. And if it has to be done, it has to be done. And it's going to pay off. It's going to be for a good reason. I'm sure there's a way. This is the original color book. Oh my God! It's been in there since 1955. Kind of like opening up a bottle of old wine. I don't know that David truly has understood the enormity of the task that he has taken on. Getting things done in Cuba is always three steps forward, two steps back. Listen, the parts are still in customs. I've seen so many foreigners, and they stumble upon the bureaucracy. We probably bent some people out of shape. You know, we're pretty not aggressive. Well, you didn't bend anybody out well, of shape. I know. did. Just give it up. Now I see what I've gotten myself into. The notion that somebody could get in trouble for supplying a, a car part uh, to restore Ernest Hemingway's vehicle, that just seems absurd. The export of U.S. origin goods, car parts or anything else, to Cuba would be a violation of the OFAC sanctions. There are definite consequences, both financial and potentially criminal. $250,000 per transaction if you did it knowingly. We were in deep shit. I didn't realize where we were going with this. I don't want to end up in Sing Sing. They want to throw the book at me. They're gonna throw the book at me. Nobody can defend this with a straight face. I'm very bummed out. I mean, this is big stuff. I gotta think about my family, Adam. This is the stuff that belongs in the 1960s. It doesn't belong in the 20 teens. Well, the Cold War is dead, guys. The fact that you're being stopped from achieving that simple, noble end by bureaucracy and prejudice exposes that bureaucracy and prejudice. It's not the Cubans' fault. It's not the Americans' fault. It's both of them. My belief is that this will have ramifications that go far beyond just the restoration of, of an automobile. They talk about doing the right thing, fighting the right battle, and, and this is the one. And it's beyond Cuba. It, like I say, it's a microcosm of how I feel like our country needs to be for future generations.